be me, forever DM with uni friends ready to dungeon some dragons. As I like kobolds, and intended this game to just be a one shot I made all the characters kobolds, so be not me. Kobold fighter, kobold bard, kobold rogue, kobold cleric, kobold sorcerer, kobold ranger, plus weasel. Be sent to cave by kobold leader as a maturity ritual and to rescue someone's friend. Get there and see gnomes? The face when gnome racism initiated. They start fighting the gnomes. Rogue tries to be sneaky and climb a wall. Natural one. Falls down and nearly falls unconscious. The ranger's weasel starts fucking demolishing the gnomes. Warrior kills some gnomes too. When all gnomes are dead, ask the question, What are you going to do now? Warrior, cleric and bard say they want to loot to get some coin and find some gnome child. Ask the others the same. Ranger. I want to burn the gnomes. Record scratch PNG. Sorcerer. Yeah, the children too. Rogue. Wait. Me. Looking for some hope. Are you going to stop them? Rogue. No. I want to skin a gnome. Me. Why would you do that? Rogue. I want a gnome disguise. Me. Okay. Roll it. Rolls around to seven. Me. You're not going to deceive anyone with it. Rogue. It's okay, I keep it. They go through a little cave, killing and burning gnomes till they get to the obvious final boss room. It's a new board dragon with some treasures. Kobold don't like angry dragon, but kobold like gold. Kobolds go get gold and rescue the guy. On the big area where the dragon is, they see a small entrance and a stone box. Four kobolds try to keep busy the dragon and two rescue the guy. It's a hard time, but they manage to do it. When they open the small stone box, they see a bunch of spiders creep out of it and a guy rises. Pissed, strong warlock looking for revenge. Thanks to warlock boy, they finish the dragon in no time. Yay, dot wav. Warlock says he doesn't need the money so they can keep it. 10,000 gold and some nice magic items. They return to their nest with the warlock just to find it all destroyed. It seems dragon did it. They enter the nest to look for survivors. Ranger rolls a 15 and finds a kid. Rogue rolls one, and then a four. Finds an old man, steps on its neck and kills him instantly. Session ends by getting them into a big city, and Warlock, named Mordred, saying to go with him to meet Flavio, the leader of the city. In the next thread, after meeting Flavio Ranger, Rogue and Sorcerer help old man Jenkins to get magic fruit and make their dreams come true. Be me, DM as always. Be not me, Sorcerer, Rogue, Ranger plus Weasel, now called Fifi. The crew followed Mordred to a big city. Unlike other cities they had seen, all kinds of races lived there, humans, elves, dwarfs, gnomes, half-orcs and even some kobolds. They get to an incredibly gigantic room where the giant copper dragon awaits. Mordred. My lord Flavio, I've come back with both the kobolds who- Mordred gets hit by a stinky stone. <laughs> Flavio. God fucking damn it. You're one of the only five fucking people who can speak to me just as Flavio, so or you do it, or I swear next time it's going to be an explosive fucking rock. Mordred laughs silently and then loudly. After telling Flavio what happened on their last adventure, they get rewarded a home on the cave area of the city. This is the area where nocturnal or light sensitive creatures live, so they like it. After getting most of their treasure, the crew goes for a walk and finds a human librarian, very worried and looking for something. They approach her. Ranger. What's the matter? Librarian. Old man Jenkins stole a book from the library and it's a valuable one. Can you help me? Rogue and Ranger. It depends on the price. Librarian. Oh, I, I, I could give you 10 gold coins. I think that's fair. Rogue. Make it 50 or we leave. Me. Roll for deception and it's going to be hard. Natural 20. One of the only good throws he's going to get. Librarian. It's very pricey, but I think I'll manage. They start to look for Old Man Jenkins and eventually find him on a small alley frantically reading and mumbling. Old Man Jenkins. Damn it, it's not here. I just need some info. Ranger. The fuck are you doing? Old Man Jenkins. Oh, nothing. Just looking for some fruits for my grandson and stuff. Sorcerer. Bullshit. You tell us what you're doing or we kill you and get the money for the book. Old Man Jenkins. Okay, okay, I got it. I was looking for info about a magic fruit tree I find. Players become interested and help the man look in the book but don't find the fruit in it. Old Man Jenkins describes the fruit as oval shape, green, and red colours, and a bit of hair on it. 
Mmm, thought PNG. They prepare a bit for the quest and swear vengeance on the horse seller. Still don't know why. While they're on the road, they find a gnome trader. Oh shit, here we go again. As they speak to him menacingly, the gnome gets intimidated and prepares to fight. And as the sorcerer makes a wrong move, he summons a strong creature. Expecting a fight, I start to look for a 2d20 roll. But, Ranger. Whoa, whoa, man, not cool. Why did you do that? What? Dot Wav. Me. Roll for deception and hope it's high. Natural fucking 20! They start to act offended at the acts of the obviously intimidated gnome merchant and call him racist because he misinterpreted them. The gnome merchant apologises profusely and leaves. They swear vengeance on the gnome because gnome. They arrive at the mountain and have two options. Climb and try to save time or go through a tunnel. Rogue has a Vietnam flashback of his last time climbing so they decided to use the tunnel. While going through the tunnel they start to hear a series of clings and clangs. They find an ogre and goblin smashing a stalagmite. Ogre. Listen gob gob. If you want to get strong like me, you gotta smash rock and also you can make a figurine. Gob gob. Whoa, you're so strong bub bub. <laughs> <laughs> Expecting the crew to murder hobo these two. I again look for 2d20. The crew approaches the pair and start talking. They ask them about the magic tree, so I secretly roll to see if they know. Gob Gob rolls a natural one. Gob Gob knows where the tree is, but it just makes the crew lose time. Finally they get there, an enormous tree full of mango looking fruits waiting for them, and a guy sitting there with a wrestler belt and a fire elemental. Champion, don't come near or I shall fight you. They come closer, so they fight. Actually, a quite easy encounter. I hoped it would be harder. No worries. Next time will be harder. Using Mage Hand, they manage to get around 5 kgs of the fruit and go back home and say goodbye to Gob Gob and Bub Bub. This isn't the end of that session, but as this has become larger than I expected, I'll put the rest on part 3. That should be shorter, or maybe I'll do a part 4. I don't know. Hope you like it. Once back in the city, the crew went back with Old Man Jenkins and gave him 5 peachy mangoes. British traduction of Manguito Melacontón. As he started processing the fruit by extracting its juice, boiling it, mixing it with an iron powder and letting it dry into a stick to create an incense. Once lit, this incense would grant them enchanted dreams, so they began to sleep. Basically, I ruled that each sleeping character who smelled the incense could add up the four things they thought would happen, even Beast as Fifi. And from them, I would improvise a scene while in the scene they could do what they pleased, but had to pass a charisma check. So the things they selected were Ranger, lots of treasure, Rogue is stabbed, Old Man Jenkins is bitten by Fifi, kill gnomes, Fifi, eat lots of food, bite the rogue, kill lots of gnomes, Rogue, weasel biting the necks of people, stab the ranger, fair enough, swim in money, burn gnomes, sorcerer, Fifi kills Rogue, Fifi eats Old Man Jenkins, 10 gnomes rape rogue. <laughs> Not unexpected, but still, Jesus fucking Christ. Fuck it, let's do it. As you regain consciousness, you see a big room all made out of gold. In front of you, a pool of golden coins. Behind the pool, a giant golden gnome statue with four arms, each holding a sword. And at the sides, 10 normal sized golden gnomes with spears. Me. What do you do? Rogue. I enter the pool. Me. Swim check, please. Rogue fails horribly. Me. You begin to sink to the bottom. Oh fuck. Dot PNG. Sorcerer. No worries, I'll help him. Rolls decently, and all are on solid ground. Me. Also the giant gnome wakes up, and three weasel of slivery hide come from behind it, one holding old man Jenkins by the neck. Is a giant gnome not just human? Kinda is, actually. Ranger. Where's Fifi? Me. It's the weasel holding old man Jenkins, and so ensue a very bad played battle between the crew and the giant statue using a lot of charisma rolls to resuscitate people and to give rogue and sorcerer sexual impotence. Oh because why not? Oh no. <laughs> oh Jesus Christ. In a certain moment, old man Jenkins wakes up and uses the charisma roll to fill the room with beer. The rogue then becomes a half kobold, half siren to be able to breathe but ends up drunk because it's breathing fucking beer. The ranger then empties the room of beer, draining out the room, 
As Rogue begins to drown again, asks, Rogue, we can do whatever we want, right? Me. If you roll well enough, of course. Rogue, I want to become a god. Rolls quite high, like an 18. Me. You acquire the aura of a deity and begin floating in the middle of the room. Also, the gnome on the wall begins to wake up. I'd forgotten about them and walk to you. Roll for them to see if they see through Rogue but fail. The gnomes. Oh great god of lust. We laugh at it until Sorcerer says, Sorcerer. Wait, so Rogue is a god of lust, but isn't he impotent also? Sudden realisation comes to your minds. Begins to laugh like maniacs. And so the impotent god of lust became a meme in our grip. After a few rounds of combat with the big gnome, Rogue falls unconscious. And with cringe in every fibre of my body, I say, me. The ten gnomes begin to rape your body. You take 8d4 of damage. Actually kill him with the damage. Record scratch.png. Rogue. What the actual fuck? Me. Hey, don't look at me. I didn't want this. Sorcerer begins to laugh uncontrollably. The dream ended when they killed the big gnome. But while they did it, Sorcerer died a bunch of times. Rogue became a beholder and Ranger transformed Fifi into a white adult dragon. Next and final session. As they woke up, they noticed their body had changed. Old Man Jenkins got a giant bottle of beer. Rogue became a half kobold, half beholder, and large floating kobold head with only one eye and a tentacle with another eye. Sorcerer became a blood magus. Fifi became a very young white dragon. Ranger became a dragon rider. All this as a level up. This was a wacky campaign, so I didn't bother too much about the balance. The crew were happy about this change, and took two more incense and left the fruit at their house. They left to return the book to the librarian, the rogue obviously disguised. As they end the talk with her, I tell them that the fruit, due to its effects, could be considered a drug. My players. Okay, we go speak with Flavio. You what? They go with Flavio. Flavio sees the bullshit. Flavio arrests them. My players. What the fuck? Flavio. Okay, no worries. I'll just interrogate and imprison you until the Green Guards come here. So they will judge you. I don't know the actual background of the Green Guards, but I played them as a Greenpeace Inquisition. The crew told Flavio about what happened, but making them look innocent as they just avoided truths and didn't lie the rules were easy and managed to trick Flavio, but they still were in prison. They tried to use telekinesis to take the keys of the distracted guards and actually get them but don't use them yet. At some point in the night, the guards bring Old Man Jenkins to imprison him too, and ends up in the same cage as Fifi. (laughs) They were pissed at him. Don't know why. It was their stupidity that got them there. And Ranger said, Ranger, Fifi, growl at him. Roll for intimidate. Natural 20. Old Man Jenkins shits himself and faints out of fear. The guards, worried, take him to get medical attention, giving them a window of opportunity to escape. Have the rogue roll for stealth for everyone. Rolls a natural 20. So they get out of the prison with no one realising. They get the incense back and go to the brothel so no one will care about their suspicious activities. Dream sequence part 2. They woke up in the city, but all seemed a bit different. Everyone seemed to forget what happened, but there was a problem. Another guy who casually smelled the incense dreamed of becoming a king. And he was a gnome so the crew made a fight of charisma rolls to keep him out of the dream and succeeded. Before they woke up, they all tried to use charisma rolls to make everyone out of the dream forget about everything. They rolled, but no one rolled high enough, so they got a partial result. Everyone in the city forgot. Not the green guards, though. The end game. Days later after the dream sequence, they saw a bunch of druids, ranger and barbarians with a hooded man going to Flavio's place, so they shot themselves at the sight. They followed them to their destination and heard Flavio say, You have my permission. So they tried to run off the city. When they had picked up everything they saw, the hooded man with Old Man Jenkins captured. They killed Old Man Jenkins but got found by the hooded man. This hooded man is a character that I wanted to play but as I'm nearly always the DM, I can't do it. He was an anthropomorphic bat with 7 levels in Monk and 1 on Fist of the Forest. 56 PG, 22 AC, without armour and hitting quite heavy. He was supposed to be a hard but possible and skippable battle. We'll call him Batman. They start fighting Batman and make a big mistake. They tried to run away but left the sorcerer alone. Sorcerer couldn't hit him 
and Batman downed him in one round. They came back and managed to heal him enough to wake him up. This was a sloppy fight. They were noobs and made a bad decision which I take as my fault for not advising them on how to play it. Also, they fucked a lot of roles, especially the rogue. They also managed to attract a grip, including a druid, a ranger and a barbarian. Needless to say, they lost and ranger got killed. The end of this story is quite sad. All the crew except the ranger were enslaved by the green guard and Fifi got released on an arctic mountain.